Hey everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this random weave willow shopping basket. First of all, foraging. So this project is gonna be foraged out of green material. This is just goat willow, it's just wild willow. What I've gone for is basically the spindliest little bits. Now I'll put that close to the camera here. So the spindliest little bits here, and they're what, two foot? Uh, mixed with some three foot stuff that's slightly thicker. Oh, there we go. What I've also got that I will be using is a whole bunch of extra materials, as well as this is willow and hazel and all kinds of different things. But for this project today, I won't be using this stuff. This is an example of stuff that's all been left on because that's where if you want to add in later on decorative elements, that's this stuff. But I wanted to just show you that as an example again of what we could get. Also, brief introduction into where I am. So if you don't know already, we live in a caravan right now. Therefore, when I'm doing videos like this, I either need to go out and just out and about into kind of the public woodland or like day like today, I've been able to come to somewhere that I've actually done some photography product work in the past. In return for me doing this video, I'm gonna take some photos for them for their website. So this is Glan7, based near Clangadog in Wales. So if you're interested, they have, I believe, something like 40, 50 rooms, that's crazy. And you can hire out the whole manor house. Really, I mean, I mean that would be amazing. But my personal favorite room in the house is this one. Stone floors, fireplace. Beautiful. Perfect backdrop for a video. Okay, first of all, I wanna make a couple of circles. I'd like to do this with the longest pieces that I have. That will mean I'll be able to start off from the biggest circle possible, making the biggest circle possible. So I think that's these two here. So there's different ways of um, weakening the fibers. You can just straight away try and do the circle. You can kind of do this thing. You can kind of do this wobbly dance movement, or sometimes if you're creating a real tight turn, sometimes I will like really wrench it, twist it, and then uh, it generally won't snap, you know, as you would expect. But hopefully today, because this is green, and because it's quite thin, it should just come together fairly easily. Bringing it round to roughly the shape that you want, and then twisting it, in on itself. Like so. Same again. And then we want to make this roughly the same size. And then just weaving it round and round and round. One of the simplest first things to create this is a circle. And a lot of sculptural stuff as well starts like this. It's not like what we're gonna to do today, but if you start from making a ball that's basically circle with a circle like this that you tie, and then a third one in the middle, and then you just fill the gaps, and that's like illustration. That's the start of so many different things. That's what I'm thinking, is this. We're gonna end up with something like this. Put that together, and then our bowl shape from there. I've seen some that have four circles, some that just have the two. I think I'm gonna try it with four. I've realized I need some slightly longer ones. So these are probably five and a half foot, something like that. So these are gonna be the longer, bigger ones in the middle. Same process as before. Push it against yourself if you need to. You're just working like this. Okay, then I'm gonna attempt this with a really thin piece of willow. Try and use it as a tie. You learn each time, and what I'm learning today is this is fresh, literally two, one day ago, two days ago that I harvested this. So fresh green material, and it's proving that actually it can, it can stand, stand up to being really kind of ragged quite a bit. But in essence, I'm just tying it round and round and round and round and round just to get this handle together for now. There we go. Stick, four sticks roughly put together. Now is the very fiddly bit of trying to match these up. I'll show on screen now some of the experiments that I did. 
And that's part and parcel of being a beginner and doing a project like this is just practicing, playing with the materials, seeing its kind of stress levels and just seeing what you can do with it. That's where in my experiments in the past have taught me that hopefully I should be able to just kind of roughly tie them on. The first sort of four or five that I tie on that become partly the braces are going to be loose and a bit rubbish and not really hold properly. But then the more I tie in, the more I can then go back and tighten those and the more I, the whole thing just comes together and, tight, and everything gets tighter and tighter and tighter and then you can really start properly sculpting it. But first of all, here we go. Yeah, I've definitely realised that doing it this method, I'm making a mess of stuff here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to put in, I'm going to try and add to one of these, both of these two circles, so that they can cut, become areas that I put in uh, braces. And to do that, it's just the same as starting a circle, but I'm holding it like, so see the circle here? I'm going to put this in wherever I decide to, to put it and then basically weave from there. So if you can see, so that's gone under, over, under. So now I can use this as a brace. So I can start by putting one in there like this and then try and twist it round and start moving it into different places from there. So what I'm doing now on this side is I'm starting to just place some in these braces bit and just weave them in and out, in and out. Uh, I can obviously only do that once there's enough in here to weave in and out with. So it's just a case of, like I say, just building it up and slowly, very, very slowly. Feels like it's going really slow at the moment, but it's kind of meditative really. And also what I keep trying to tell myself is it's not, it is a mess, but that's okay. It's, it's, it's okay that it's a mess as it all evolve and it will get shaped and then I'll be able to kind of manipulate it more once I start to get a stronger structure. So just keep going. Okay, pause there. I need to change cards. But as you can see, it's coming together now. It's, it's coming together. I say it's going to end up like this. I haven't figured out how I'm going to do the handle area yet. It'll end up being um, wrapped round, but whether I'm going to use a piece of willow or whether I might use something else, I'm not sure. Natural, definitely, because um, in all these projects, I want to do them out of just foraged materials. For example, I'm about to do a video that's going to be about a wreath, and one way that you can do wreaths is that you just use wrapped um, wire around a, whatever your wreath is and you just put some you know you attach something to it wrap it around attach something to it wrap it around it's an example of something that I don't, I don't really want to do I want to be able to just go into the woods find some materials and make a thing so far this is what we got is it helmet no but it's kind of like kind of nice kind of like it anyway pause there break over I've got some proper coffee not just water like I had earlier on some biscuits Really important for a project like this, you need digestive biscuits. And now I can continue. As you can see, we're starting to get that shape now. It's actually kind of turning into a bit of an egg shape. For me, that's the fun, you know, you're just letting the form take shape and it's almost like because you're working with natural materials you're letting it naturally just create its own sculptural shape and yeah oh, love it oh right, just keep filling in those gaps keep filling them in what i'm doing now is so i'm often trying to start with a thicker end 
and I'm putting it in, weaving it round a couple of times and sticking the thicker in, end in somewhere and that's what I'm using to secure it. So instead of starting like that and then having to weave in and out, which you can do, I find it easier to do it this way and less prone to snapping and you've got those first few weaving sections done right at the start. doing now as well is trying to really start to form this shape. So certain bits, I don't know if you can see there, certain bits that are a bit flatter, like it's got a bit of a divot in it, so I need to think of a way to kind of bring that back out or take this one down a bit. Um, and then at the same time, I'm slowly doing that, mixing that with what's going to be the handle as well. could probably take this bit off now, but I'm going to leave it on for now and just keep, keep weaving. Show you something. I've taken off the wrapping that I did at the very start and as you can see obviously it just kind of holds its shape now. What I'm trying to do now is slowly using the smaller ones I'm slowly starting to weave the main circles back in bearing in mind that I'm trying to not uh, it shouldn't matter too much but I'm trying not to leave too many bits like this um, hanging out around the bit where my hand's going to be because fundamentally I want to make it sort of ergonomic and still nice to hold. Now the wrapping will do a lot of that but it's still something to kind of keep in mind. You don't want, you want it to seem quite smooth this section here or well I think you do anyway. Same as the holes as well. I'm trying to not end up with like that was a bit of a mistake here. Um, I'm trying not to end up with too many kind of sharp edges because again if you're in and out of this bit you don't want, for example, like that. So I might get rid of that bit and I might move it somewhere else. Back up to the main angle and I'm going to hopefully just do time lapse of me finishing this off. Okay, that looks like it done. So the table's clear. I don't have any more material left for today. So yes, it would be quite nice. I wouldn't mind really filling this in so that it's as full as I can make it. I've been doing this for probably about five to six hours of time has spent doing this. So again, you doesn't have to be this full. You can obviously make it fuller. It depends what you want to use it for basically. Oh no, handle. Handle, I have some ivy. I'm tucking each time. Uh, if, it, if I had one wrap to do it all, that'd be brilliant. Let me do that without hitting the mic. If I had one wrap to do it all, that'd be brilliant, but I don't, so that's why each one, I'm just kind of tucking them in somewhere, holding it tight while I then do the rest. And then each time, I'm trying to pull it tight. So it's as tight as I, Pretty much tight as I possibly can do it without breaking each piece. And then when I get to the end, I then tuck it in again. Okay, handle made, basket finished. What do you think? I mean, you could fill it in more. You did, could have done it where you didn't have to fill it in this much, but totally up to you. If you do want to see some of the other weaving projects that I've done, for example, the Catalan tray behind me, or this Douglas for another random weave basket, then there'll be the videos at the end. All right, I think that's it for me. Thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Before I go, I thought I'd do a quick update of what the basket looks like three months later, and you've been using it as a harvesting basket. It's really great, really strong. I love the wild weave, kind of holds it together really nicely. It's perfect for harvesting. It's really convenient to hold, really nice big uh, entry holes to, to throw everything in. Yeah, I really love it. I love and this. It, and it's this held stuff. up. The, the big surprise to me is, is how it would hold up. Like, yeah. It's definitely loosened, hasn't it? Yeah. But not, but surprisingly, not, not that much. It's not lost any of its structure. It's really strong. It's like a bird's nest. It's great. Yeah.
And I think actually, and, and this would be sort of my advice to other people is, so for example, it was a test. I can see that I did three different bits of the handle here. This one has stayed tighter than the other two. That might be because there was more of this one or I literally just maybe wrenched it for, uh, tighter when I did it. But what I was planning to do anyway is that as these will have loosened, I'm gonna come back and um, you can always add, that's the sort of the beauty of doing a random weave is that you can add more to it to then make it stronger again if you want to, um, or you just go make another one. But uh, yeah, pretty pleased. And yeah, there's an a, example had of a, used. Had a lot of comments. I'm quite surprised by the style of weaving and how beautiful it is, how strong and functional it is. Um, yeah, it's really great. Great first really love it. example of a project. Mm. Uh, and if you are interested, the reason that I've given it to Abel is that we've been making a bunch of different videos throughout the year of an agroecological permaculture market garden mm. month by month. So as of right now, we've just filmed the last month one that came out probably two weeks ago when if you were to see this um, at the time of it coming, coming out, because um, we are now in June. And yeah, we'll be continuing throughout the year seeing what it's like to run a market garden yeah so yeah anyway thanks again everyone see you in the next one